हेलो एंड ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम मणिपाल हॉस्पिटल बानेर पुणे आई एम डॉक्टर करण चंचलानी आई एम अ रेडिएशन ऑनकोलॉजिस्ट एंड विद स्पेशल इंटरेस्ट इन न्यूरो ऑनकोलॉजी टुडे वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ रेडियो सर्जरी फॉर ए वी एम और ए वी माल फॉर्मेशन विच इज अ कॉमन ट्रीटमेंट इन न्यूरो ऑनकोलॉजी और द फील्ड ऑफ ब्रेन ट्यूमर्स सो फर्स्ट वॉट इज अबाउट दिस रेडियो सर्जरी सो ऑनेस्टली इट्स अ मिस नॉमर इट्स नॉट अ एक्चुअल सर्जरी इट इज ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ ट्यूमर्स और टारगेट्स विथ वेरी हाई डोज ऑफ रेडिएशन विच इज डिलीवर्ड वेरी प्रिसाइसली इन अ सिंगल सेशन समटाइम्स वी डिलीवर इट इन ओवर टू और थ्री और अप टू फाइव सेशन ऑल्सो एंड वी कॉल इट एज स्टीरोटेक्टिक रेडिएशन थेरेपी एस आर टी इफ इट इज डिलीवर्ड इन अ सिंगल शॉट वी वी कॉल इट एज स्टेरोटेक्टिक रेडियो सर्जरी और एस आर एस like i said it is not actual surgery now coming to what is this av malformation so it's normally for that we need to understand uh, the the circulation system of the body so there are uh, great vessels uh, from the heart that arise they they carry high pressure blood uh, to the various tissues these are called as arteries so typically arteries have high pressure inside their uh, uh, lumen and they they eventually divide into multiple small branches called as capillaries those are the capillaries which provide blood nutrition oxygen to various tissues and then return the deoxygenated blood via the venous system or the veins so these veins are thin walled and typically are low pressure systems so these arteries and veins they come in uh, they never come in contact with each other they come via the bed of the capillary uh, network sometimes during the development in young children we see uh, sometimes young children are, or even in young adults these capillaries are not well formed and there are direct communications between the arteries and the veins slowly they as the child matures the uh, bp increases and by that this time these systems are now into very high tension or very high pressure so that is the time when they start bleeding because veins are not meant to carry that much pressure also mind you these communications are not fruitful to the body they do not supply any of nutrients or oxygen to the tissues frequently they form certain offshoots and uh, that is how uh, they form a uh, uh, crumpled mass of vessels which is called as av malformation uh, appearing like a tumor so now depending upon the size the location of this inside the brain and the pattern of this blood flow like how the especially the venous drainage whether it is superficial or deep they are classified into various uh, gradings uh, which is called as sn grading it is spetzler martin grading there are certain modifications or additions to this grading but grossly grade 1 and 2 can be tackled with a single modality and grade 3 onwards are the ones that are actually uh, uh, deep seated and large and may require multi modality treatment so radio surgery can be used to focus high dose radiation towards these malformations leading to obliteration of these vessels that by damaging them like i said they do not contain any normal uh, tissues or even brain uh, inside it and they are not uh, of any functional value to the body so we can safely obliterate them with high dose of radiation and expect that this bleeding risk decreases so coming to the case now we recently had a this young boy almost 21 years of age and he was uh, self employed with a, a mechanical job and he was doing well until uh, in 2022 when he actually developed headache followed by weakness of the uh, right upper limb and lower limb so what had happened is, is actually inside the body his av malformation had actually bled so that that blood was irritating the surrounding neurons and affecting his motility so he was worked up at a, a reputed center and treated and diagnosed as av malformation and since it was very deep seated it was uh, not amenable for a neurosurgical option uh, it was embolization was tried but uh, since the lesion could not obliterate fully they were referred for radio surgery which was done at a, another reputed center in 2022 and as time passed by his weakness and all improved also and cut short to 2025 he again developed similar symptoms now since the family was well aware of the uh, previous episode and the uh, 
findings so they immediately approached our neurosurgical team and uh, they could uh, investigate and fathom that uh, the, the previous lesion had again recanalized so sometimes what happens these blood vessels are not obliterated fully and in the process they again fill up it takes around three to five years and they, they almost become like previous size so here the challenge was that he had already received one embolization one course of radio surgery at an outside center and this tumor was very deep seated close to the optic uh, pathways or the vision pathways that we call so it was close to the optic uh, radiation on the left side and it was very close to the internal capsule which is a collection of white matter uh, fibers coming from various parts of the uh, brain and they supply eventually to the uh, hands and the nerves so major nerves to the hands and the uh, uh, legs or the entire body so this internal capsule was also very close by which is why he had those symptoms of whenever he was bleeding he had symptoms of paralysis of the right side, the right side. and all this lesion was located on the left so uh, we, we could uh, see uh, uh, angiography that was done at an outside cent uh, center and it was showing that the recanalization was predominantly from the antero inferior part which was close to these critical structures, the internal capsule and the optic pathways. And we could understand that uh, uh, although despite of the previous radio surgery treatment, these areas were probably underdosed and that is how it had again started refilling from that. So what we did was we actually acquired a proper MRI uh, with uh, top sequences, 3D sequences and uh, did a MR angiography at our institute. All this while the patient was uh, uh, advised to not uh, get into any strenuous physical activity or anything that could shoot up his VP and cause a frequent uh, further bleed because each subsequent bleed actually carries a risk of uh, mortality by 10%. So and the risk of uh, bleed increases with every year. So we had to treat it. This time again, neurosurgical option was evaluated and uh, called uh, not amenable, like very high risk of causing damages uh, to these uh, internal capsule. And embolization was again uh, not considered as a option because the size was almost three centimeters. So as a standalone option, embolization was not sufficient enough to obliterate it fully and we could also delineate one, one uh, structure as we'll see on the planning where we, uh, from where the recanalization had happened so we decided uh, to uh, we discussed the case in with uh, multidisciplinary uh, tumor board approach and we decided to treat it with uh, radio surgery as a treatment option so once the decision to treat the patient with radiation has been taken typically it is a radio surgery and typically it is planned in a single session so we follow the routine uh, drill of uh, radiation uh, planning in which uh, there are various systems available. We uh, treat with LINAC based radio surgery system which is powered by uh, true beam LINAC uh, or a, a, set, a setup by Varian uh, systems and we need certain specialized accessories. So some centers have a system of frame based technique wherein you actually drill those frames superficially into the skull and it, it is an invasive procedure. We follow the completely non-invasive uh, uh, frameless technique wherein we create these type of individualized personalized thermoplastic masks which are different from the routine uh, head and neck mask that we use in, in a way that it is more tough, more robust and it is also reinforced from behind uh, thereby achieving a perfect immobilization even with eliminating all minimum rotations that we have. So once that uh, uh, immobilization device is created for the patient, it is then uh, a scan is taken, a planning CT scan is taken like this scan uh, with contrast of the uh, desired region uh, of the entire uh, uh, cranium so to say and you try to uh, preliminarily you can figure out where the lesion is. So over here as I am uh, pointing, this sort of is the excessive contrast enhancing lesion that we are seeing here and this is the lesion uh, but it is uh, very difficult to delineate precisely on the CT scan so which is why you also need to acquire dedicated planning MRI images preferably in the same uh, position preferably with the same immobilization devices that we saw now 
and try to fuse it in our system ideally the angiography system should also be taken in the same position and try to fuse it uh, over in our case this uh, uh, digital subtraction angiography dsa was done at an outside center and was not repeated uh, for planning purposes uh, due to financial reasons but we could get a fantastic mri fine mri resolution and uh, most importantly mr angiography sequences a 3d sequence equal matrix is uh, important Uh, that has very thin slices and ideally a zero gap so it, it is very tedious to acquire uh, these type of uh, mr images also and the patient needs to be immobilized as i said in the same uh, position preferably with the same device and uh, a important sequence over here is a time of flight sequence top sequence as we call it so over here we acquired this top sequence of uh, mri and uh, we tried to uh, uh, delineate the normal structures like the optic structures optic chiasmas and brain stem structures and over here this was the lesion that was better visualized on this mri and all this uh, increased contrast entanglement of vessels that we can see uh, were were delineated we tried to uh, spend a little time so i sat with the neurosurgeons also and we tried to uh, get the previous plans also of the previous treatment and we realized what was the reason of this failure so as you can see it's a fairly long lesion uh, craniocaudally so if this is the craniocaudal extent and it was almost like 3 3.2 cm uh, long but it is very uh, uh, not so broad on the axial images and even on the uh, coronal images so what had happened was this this uh, lower extent of the lesion was very close to the optic pathway so this is the optic chiasma that i have delineated and uh, we we could actually see nice feed uh, feeder to this nidus uh, coming around from this region and this uh, feeder was again uh, going towards the insular cortex so which is again a critical area so we had two critical areas uh, very close to the lesion and uh, we we had to be very careful while delineating this nidus so i tried to delineate this feeding vessel as close to the nidus as possible while still preserving a branch that was supplying to the uh, insular cortex as well as trying to delineate clearly the optic uh, pathways so this was probably underdose in the previous plan and which is how this lesion was not fully obliterated so to say with the previous plan and uh, that is how subsequently the patient had recanalization or refilling of the lesion after 3 years so we could identify that cause and that is how we could ensure that all this is now adequately covered in our targets these planning mri images were actually now fused with the ct scan so this is a fusion scan where this is the ct part of it and this is the mr part of it and we can actually uh, uh, realize on the ct we can see the previous embolizations also those glue uh, thing are uh, picked up on the ct they are a uh, little difficult to pick up on the top sequences of mri but we can see some uh, hypo intense uh, thing on the posterior side so this part of the lesion was well obliterated so to say from the previous treatments but this part was the one from the antero inferior part which was actually refilling or recanalizing the thing and we tried to plan it with multiple arcs so it was like a hyper arc uh, treatment wherein we use multiple non coplanar arcs uh, from various uh, planes not just a single plane and thereby we try to create a highly conformal dose distribution uh, uh, around the uh, lesion we didn't take any ptv margin specifically because it is try uh, it is said that we try to avoid as much of normal brain irradiation as possible especially in this young patient and this was the final plan wherein uh, we could actually so this was the arrangement of the thing wherein multiple planes were chosen to target a single lesion and all this was highly modulated radiation that we had given while execution of the treatment also we we acquired a scan again uh, try to fuse it with the planning scan and ensure that it is coming to the same position and this is the final thing that we could deliver so uh, the dose was uh, at least it was 21 gray at the periphery the core dose was actually much higher it was more than 24 gray also but this was the minimum dose that the entire volume was covered with 
and we ensured that uh, whatever we had delineated uh, the areas leading to failure from the previous treatment those volumes are adequately covered and while still our optic uh, pathways including not just the optic chiasma and optic tract but also the optic radiations going to uh, inside as well as the internal capsule area is close by to this target so all those uh, regions were spared and that is how we could deliver a highly conformal plan as we can see over here that is coming up in the blue color so this was the uh, uh, successful treatment that we could uh, ensure in this patient with the help of modern technology including hyper arc treatments volumetric arc uh, vmat planning rapid arc or vmat as we call it uh, multiple non co planners uh, systems a robust uh, optimization and then image guidance during treatment the patient tolerated the treatment very well excellently it has been almost 3 months now the effect of radiation as i said uh, it takes a little time to come so the obliteration is checked only after 6 months uh, similarly the risk of bleeding also decreases with time uh, this is the only caveat of treating these cases with radio surgery wherein we do not uh, obliterate the lesion or uh, remove the lesion immediately uh, and the risk of bleeding also decreases over a uh, next few months rather than instantly so this is the only caveat that we have uh, with radio surgery otherwise for all these deep sited uh, tumors uh, the risk of actual surgery is far far higher as compared to radio surgeries thank you